Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this mission I'm going to discuss tactics against DCS radar SAM. So a lot of this actually is going to apply to other aircraft. So even if you're not an F-16 guy, uh, if you fly the Hornet or um, other aircraft and you want some information on, on how to go about taking out SAMs, uh, this you might find this helpful. Anyway, so as an overview, sort of how we go about this. First thing we want to do is establish a safe area and situational awareness. So we kind of want to know in this mission, you know, look at the briefing, look at the map, figure out, you know, kind of get inside the mission creator's head a little bit, figure out where the safe areas are, where dangerous areas are. So just as a quick example, in this mission we have a river, this is Caucasus, and, you know, I might understand that everything south of the river that's kind of hostile territory and as I work deeper and deeper I'm gonna kinda note you know where things start getting hairy where where I start seeing lots of things pop up on my RWR and I'm just gonna kinda make a mental note of where that safe area is um, another really good safe area water right you can't put well, you can put ships on the water, but uh, you're not going to find any SAM systems over the water. So water is a good place to start. All right, so once you've established a safe area, situational awareness, next you need to find the threat, right? So there's a lot of ways to go about that. Um, use the appropriate altitude and the appropriate tools to search for the threat. So in the F-16, we have the HTS pod, right? We can bring that up. We can use the HTS pod to locate a site allow it to it's not going to find it exactly there's some error in that uh, because it can't triangulate it doesn't have two sensors it's, it's really one sensor and a computer um, but we can use that to get our targeting pod in the area um, we can use our helmet mounted uh, queuing system and we can look around and we can see smoke trails for example, if we got a mission with a bunch of aircraft and you see smoke trails coming up at some of your buddies, you can use the systems in the F-16. And I'm going to run through some scenarios after I talk about this a little bit so you can kind of demonstrate that. And I have some other videos too if you check out my channel, uh, really tutorials that go through using those tools a little bit deeper. Um, but anyway, appropriate altitude, appropriate tools to find the threat. Uh, appropriate altitude. So, if I'm hunting radar SAMs, I'm looking for like an SA-6 or a Buk-11. The best, kind of best altitude to do that at, if you can, is around six to 8,000 feet. That lets you be high enough that you can kind of look down and see, but also low enough that if that thing fires at you, you can get down on the deck fast. You're low. Below 10,000 feet, you have lots of power to maneuver with. You can change directions quickly. You can hit the deck. You can do what you need to do to keep yourself away from that radar threat. Now, where that altitude won't work is if you're flying a mission and you've got uh, IR threats, right? Uh, you can't see those on your RWR. So if there's man pads down there, if there's Strelas, um, you know, the Gopher, the 13, that will actually pop up on your RWR. But anyway, that, that six to 8,000 puts you right in their WES and their weapon engagement zone. So you want to, um, if you have those IR threats, you want to be higher than that, but low enough to sort of uh, still maneuver. So IR threats, they're good up to like, depending on what, what it is, um, roughly 12,000 AGLs where you start getting out of their weapon engagement zone. So above 12,000, definitely want to try to keep it below 20. Um, Above, above 20 you have issues, a lot of, you know, just a lot of missions have clouds in them, right? You can't see through the clouds, so that's, that presents a challenge. So if there are IR threats like between 12 and 20,000, a uh, good place to work when you're searching for these guys. All right, so you want to find it. Next thing to do is mark the exact position. So um, again, I'll run through that, how to do that in scenarios after our little chat here. But you want to mark the exact position, create a steer point. 
Next thing, assess the threat. So we're gonna look in our targeting pod. We're gonna look all around, play with the contrast and, and everything, and try to identify exactly what type of site it is, which radars are there, what you need to take out to disable that site. And then you also wanna look for other air defenses around the site. So a common site might be an SA-6, and then there might be one or two tours right around that site. So um, the SA-6 is kind of an older Soviet era system, um, very capable at longer ranges. You know, it can, it can get you, it can hurt you pretty far out, but it has really very little short range defense. So um, common tactic, um, you know, for ground defenses is to park a tour, SA-15, right near that site. What that tour does is it has great short range defense. It can shoot down incoming missiles. So you can't just simply lob harms at that SA-6 and take it out from, from long range. You have to, uh, it makes you work a little bit harder. So you have to basically disable the tour first um, or sneak in low level and drop cluster bombs on it. All right, so assessing the threat, we've identified the radars. We've identified what we need to take out to disable the site. We've assessed any other air defenses around the site. After that, we needed to develop a plan to take it down. So um, we'll run through that in scenarios, but we want to assess what weapons we have on the aircraft and what terrain is available to mask us from that site, right? Because the, the best way to not get shot by a SAM system is to put terrain, buildings, trees, whatever you can between you and that site. Um, so we need to uh, assess the terrain, assess the site, assess our weapons, come up with a plan, and then execute the plan. Um, not much more to say about it than that. So I'm gonna run through two or three scenarios now and just kind of walk through step by step, um, taking down assorted SAM systems. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get con configured real fast. I have an SA-6 up ahead with a TOR protecting it. Uh, I got my helmet mounted, chewing system on. Flip to program three. It's just personal preference. It seems to be pretty aggressive at pumping out chaff and flare. Go air to ground mode. I got AGM 65 kilos. They are on it's in visual mode. Go ahead and bring up my targeting pod. And I'm going to set the mark point. Uh, to the default, which is HUD, so I'll be able to simply just use my helmet mounted sight to make a mark point. Alright. I'm going to TMS up long here. See this little oval? That tells me that the helmet mounted sight, you can see it moving around here. If I put this on something and hit TMS up twice, it's going to create a mark point. Over this way. No. Oop. Over here. Alright. That was fast. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do, if I need to go defensive, I'm just going to put this thing on my 3 9 line. 90 degrees, right off. And I'm going to start looking for it. Looking for smoke trails. Hasn't shot at me yet. I'm staying at this altitude. I know he's over here somewhere. We're looking at the helmet mounted system here. It's telling me which way to look. All right. There's the smoke trail. There it is. All right, team mess up twice. Set my mark point there. I'm go to defensive. Turn down and away. And then just keep alternating three nine line on this guy. There we go. See, I kind of steered it right into the terrain. All right, cool. So now I'm going to work back towards a safe area. Back where I came from. Pop up a little altitude so I can see real well. Get him in the targeting pod. Assess the SAM site. Make a plan. Execute the plan. So I'm going to make this mark point I just created, the active steer point. Party pod soy, zoom in. There's my sight. Let's put a little 
more. All right, I've got the SA6 radar. So if I take that down, I'm going to disable the site. And I'm going to look for any other defenses. We saw a 15 indication. That's the tour right there. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and mark that as well. So targeting pod is now the source for the mark point. Team S up twice. That's created 2-7. That's my active steer point. And I'm going to Let's see. I think what I'm going to do is run. Yeah. Looks pretty flat with a lot of trees right here. I think I'm going to run in kind of over the lake, pop up about five miles out, and launch Maverick at that 15. Once the 15's down, the 6 can't shoot down missiles, so I can just take a standoff shot at the 6. Alright. Hmm. I think I was flying over a uh, marker beacon. Alright, I'm going to bring up my Maverick page. Pre-plan mode manual handoff. I don't like auto handoff. It always locks the wrong thing for me. I um, don't think I need to zoom in on the map. Yeah, I'm going to do it on it. Alright. Time to run in. So this water is probably lower terrain than everything else, so it should let me get down nice and low, below the trees. Keep it about Look at my range here to target. So we're around five miles, I'm gonna pop the nose up. Get that Maverick on target, watch it. Then I'm gonna hook left and get back down over the lake, I think. Just whatever I can use. Six miles. Alright, there's five miles. Pop the nose up, not too much, about seven degree climb. Guy. This away. Let's see how that worked. Money. All right, with that tour out of the way, going back to my safe area get a little altitude and I'm gonna launch a map if that's that radar just about in range here TMS up And then immediately go ahead and put him on the 3 9 line just in case. Looks like he launched Jab Flare, turning away and down.
And of course the next step, we've got cluster bombs, so we'll go ahead and take out the rest of the site. I'm going to use the CCIP designate, so I'm just going to put it over the thing, press hold, pull up, bombs come off. Let's see how we did. These are the 97, so they're going to take a second to, uh, here's my target down here. It always takes them a minute because those little skeet got to fly. Alright, so in this example I have an SA-11 boot with a TOR. So your DMS down will turn off that helmet mounted display if it's bothering you. Like it is for me. Just getting the aircraft set up, go to air to ground mode. Go ahead and turn those CB 105s on. Maybe they'll be ready when I need them. Arms coming on. Go to the harm weapon page. Actually, scratch that. I'm going to do target pod over here. And then HSD. Or, sorry, had over here. Alright, so you see my 11s already showing up. So, what I'm going to do is use this uh, harm targeting sensor to get my targeting pod in the area of the radar site. Okay, so coming over here, I'm going to search for it. brightness contrast here just to get a good picture. Yeah, it's not all that great, but that's fine. So this is an 11. We have the snowdrift radar right here. And then each individual launcher has its own radar. But if you take out the search radar, it cripples the site. It takes those individual launchers, it takes them a lot longer to lock onto you, and they have a max range of about 10 miles, so it makes it a lot easier to take this thing down once you get that search radar out of the way. Search so radar's right there, and then we have also a tour right there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this site. We got mark point, dropper right, targeting pod. TMS up twice. One, two. Created that mark point. Set that as active steer point. Go to my weapon page. So in position mode, equation of motion, I have. Actually, I'm going to unlock it here because I don't want it stuck on 11. Um, SD, snowdrift. Snowdrift adds steer point 26. 
And then I also need to take out the tour. So let's see what page that tour is on. Table two. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run in low, get the shot off at the tour, because that, that uh, can shoot down the incoming missiles. And if I can, I'm gonna flip over to table one real quick and then also launch one at the snow drift. Which I'm gonna go table one because it's just one page. So snow drift, two six is what I'm telling my harp to do. I got the site marked, hold on back there. So I need to come up with a plan to get close to it. I think I'm going to run up the coast a little bit and come in from this side just over the land and down low like right by the trees. Let's see how that works. Okay so new plan. I'm going to come from right to left, just over the water, and I'm going to put these buildings between myself and the site, and I'll pop up and launch two arms at the site. Alright, running in. Looks like using those buildings to shield me has been successful because the missiles keep hitting them. Watching my range here. When I start getting close to that minimum range, I'm going to pop the nose up and shoot these two arms. Alright, eight and a half, eight miles seems about right. Getting down low range. So we have two six. Table two, fifteen, two six. If anyone knows of a faster way to do that or to set it up beforehand, let me know in the comments. See how our missiles did. Nailed him. Nailed him. All right, so that site is now crippled. The uh, tour's gone. The Eleven's lost its search radar, so it, it's going to take longer to lock on you, and it's going to have a limited range of about ten miles those launchers only. Hey everyone, uh, thanks a lot for sticking with me. I hope that was helpful. There's a lot to pack into one video. And if you're still here, there's a nice landing for you.